we have a glass sphere which has a radius of 10 centimeters and it's made up of a material whose refractive index is 1.5. Suppose we keep an object, let's call it as O, at a distance of 30 centimeters from the sphere. We need to figure out where its image is going to be. All right, the first step to solving most of the problems in ray optics is to first make a drawing. We already have that. And since images are asked for us, we can draw a bunch of rays of light. So let's say we draw one ray of light from here, it goes here, another ray of light maybe goes over there. This ray goes undeviated. This ray will refract, we know that much. I don't know how much will it refract, but it's gonna refract maybe somewhat like this. From this, we see the rays of light are hitting a curved surface. So this gives me the clue that we're dealing with curved surface refraction. And there's only one formula that comes to my mind when it comes to curved surface refraction. That's the curved surface refraction formula. We have derived this formula in a previous video. And uh, Rm is the refractive index of the medium that contains the refracted ray. Im is the refractive index of the medium that contains the incident ray. And u, v, and r are just the image distance, object distance, and the radius of curvature. So let's see if we have all the data. I will just plug it in and let's see what we get. Now, whenever we are substituting, we have to use signs. And the sign convention we always choose is we take our pole as the origin, so this is our origin, and we choose the incident direction to be positive. The right side is positive in this example. Right side is the incident direction. So all the positions on the right side are going to be positive positions. All the positions on the left side are going to be negative positions. So let's apply this equation and see what we get. So over here, the refracted medium is 1.5 because this is where the refraction is happening. So the refracted medium is 1.5 divide by the image distance, which I don't know, which I want to figure out, minus the incident medium. Incident medium is the one that contains the incident ray. Now nothing is mentioned, so we're gonna, we're gonna assume that to be one, uh, air or vacuum. So that's just going to be one. Divide by the object distance. Well, how far is the object? Our object is 30 centimeters, so 30. But wait, we have to be careful. It's on the negative side, so negative 30. That equals. Rm minus Im, so 1.5 minus one. So that's 0.5, that is 0.5, divided by the radius of curvature. Radius is just 10 centimeters. Again, we have to be very careful. When we're dealing with radius, you see the center is over here, isn't it? This is the center of curvature. So the center is on the positive side, and that's why the radius becomes positive. All right, so whenever dealing with radius of curvature, think about where the center is. Okay, so we can solve this equation now. Pause the video for a while and just do the algebra and see what you get. All right, let's do this. So we get 1.5 over V plus one over 30 is 0.5 over 10. 0.5 is half, so this is half over 10. I like to call this as one over 20. Right, one over two divided by 10 gives you one over 20. And from this, we can now figure out, let me let me do that over here. So you get 1.5 over V equals, I subtract one over 30 on both sides. So you get one over 20 minus one over 30. That gives us, we can take 60 as the common, three minus two, that's one over 60, which means V equals 60 times 0.5, 1.5, so. Let me choose the same color. So V equals 60 times 1.5, that's 90 centimeters. It's centimeters because our object distance was in centimeters, radius was in centimeters. So there we have it, that's the answer, 90 centimeters. So let's draw that. 90 centimeters from there. But remember, our, ob our distance are always from the pole. So positive 90, positive 90 would be on this side. So it's going to be somewhere 90 centimeters from here. So this is 20 because radius is 10. So 90 would be somewhere over here maybe. Somewhere over here maybe. So the ray of light is gonna go and meet at this point. 
these two rays are going to meet at this point. Hmm. Do you think this can be the final answer? I want you to pause the video and think about this for a while. Well, you may have already guessed it. These two rays of light before converging here are going to hit the second surface. And as a result, they will refract again, which means this cannot be our final answer. So what we have to do next is apply the same formula for the second surface. So let's do that down over here. I have all the things ready. All we have to do now is apply that same formula because we're still dealing with the curved surface, right? So apply that same formula now to the second surface. So now this is going to be our new pole. No longer this one, we'll not care about this one. This is the surface that we're interested in. Again, great idea to pause the video and see if you can substitute into this equation one more time. All right, let's do it. Refracted medium. This time, the ray of light is going to bend over here, right? Somewhere, somewhere like this. I don't know exactly how it bends, it doesn't matter. But the bending is going to happen over here. So this time, the outside medium becomes the refracted medium. So outside medium is just one. So when we substitute, you get one divided by the image distance. We don't know the image. This is not the final image. We want to calculate what the final image is. Minus incident medium. This time on this surface, this is the incident ray. I hope you can see that. These are the incident rays on this surface. We're going to completely neglect these incident rays now because that was for this surface. All that matters now what's happening to this surface. So the incident rays are now in this medium, inside the glass. So the incident medium now becomes 1.5 divided by the object distance. Where is the object? Now, we might think that object is over here, but we have to be careful. You see, that was the object for this surface. What is the object for this surface? Well, here's how I like to think about this. I like to think that object is where the incident rays meet, right? Initially, these were the incident rays, and wherever the incident rays met with each other was the object. But now, these are the incident rays. So where are they meeting? Well, if you trace them backwards, they will not meet. But if you trace them forward, they meet over here. So this, this now becomes our new object. This becomes the object for this surface. Now I know it sounds a little weird that the rays of light are appearing to converge at this point. We don't have to worry too much about that. Just think of it this way. Wherever the incident rays meet, that's where your object is. In fact, this is called as a virtual object because it's not really there, but it doesn't matter. That's the object for us. So where is the object? What's the object distance? Well, again, we have to be careful. Is it 90 centimeters? No. When you, when you talk about the object distance, we have to always take it from the pole. What's the distance from the pole? Well, this distance is 90 centimeters. This is 20. So our new object distance is going to be this distance, and that will be 90 minus 20. That's going to be 70 centimeters. And again, we have to apply our sign conventions. I'm sorry, I should have done that before, but let's do that. If you apply sign conventions, again, incident direction is positive. Incident direction is positive. And so everything to the right of the pole is positive. So all these are positives. And everything to the left of the pole is negative. Now, this, this is negative. It's negative. All right, so our object is on the positive side. I know this diagram has become a little shabby. Excuse me for that, but now we are dealing with objects. So the object is going to be positive. So we now have 70 over here plus 70 object distance. That's going to be equal to this minus this, this minus this. So one, point, one minus 1 1.5, that's minus 0 0.5 divided by R. Now R, think of it as the position of the center. And the center now is on the negative side. Again, we have to be very careful over here. And so R now is negative. Hope that makes sense. Because when you consider from this pole, the center now is on the negative side. So you begin minus 10. And if we solve this equation, we will now get the final image. So again, pause the video and just try and do the algebra yourself. All right, let's do that. So we get one over V equals I'll add 1.5 divided by 70 on both sides. 
So again, this right hand side, the negative negative cancels, and you have a half. Half divided by ten is one over twenty. And oh, we get plus one point five over seventy. So if you take the LCM, what's our LCM? Seventy and twenty LCM would be one forty. So over here we multiplied by seven. Here we multiplied by two, so two times one point five is three. So we get ten over one forty, and therefore our final answer. Our final image distance is going to be reciprocal, 140 divided by 10, that's going to be 14 centimeters. That is our final answer. Again, we have to check where that is. It's 14 centimeters from this point on the positive side. So that's going to be somewhere over here. 14 centimeters. 14 centimeters. All right, so the ray of light, we know after refraction, after refraction, it's gonna go like this. So this is where finally the two rays of light are going to meet. And so this is the general way in which we can solve any problem where you have multiple refractions taking place. You take the image of the first, first surface as the object for the next surface. Again, if there was another surface over here, you would just apply the same formula. Now this would be the object for that surface. So that's the whole idea behind solving problems like this.